All right, hey guys. So, in my last video, I made a little unboxing uh, nerd video, nerding out about the ESP32. I just got these. I'm literally this is I'm making this video just minutes after the other one. Um, I'm gonna actually put this together. If you want to see some information and you want to hear my thoughts on what the ESP32 is capable of and what I think it's really going to be awesome for, go check out the video that I just finished recording. It should be on screen right now. Uh, this is going to be sort of a setting up video. So I'm going to put the ESP on the little daughter board that I got here. And I'm also going to put some headers on it and hopefully connect it to my computer and get it uh, talking to Arduino and get an initial sketch uploaded to this guy. So it might become a multi-part video, I'm not sure yet, but let's just uh, dive in and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, solder the ESP to the board here. But what I wanted to point out before I get into uh, time-lapsing that, so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me forever, this board came with these male header pins and they are normal uh i believe i might have even screwed up and said one millimeter in the last video it's two millimeter or 2.54 millimeter it's the regular breadboard uh header spacing so it is luckily in standard spacing getting around to the point of showing the male header pins it's a two row set and the daughter board is two rows so what that means is you, if I were to put these on, I'm not going to be able to use it on a breadboard. So if I'm not going to be able to use it on a breadboard, then I might as well go the Arduino route and use male header pins and just have it, you know, stick up a two by, I believe it's eight, although it might be nine, um, two by nine. And I'll just have it kind of like an Arduino, be able to, you know, stick wires into it. So that's my plan here. Uh, let's now jump over to the time lapse so you guys don't have to sit here for hours and hours. So just a little side note, totally recommend using some sort of tape to hold it down, keep it in place while you're soldering at least those first few connections. It'll just make your life a whole lot easier. So. See, I taped that down. Hopefully this will go smoothly. We get to see how my fine soldering skills are. They're not that good, so. All right, two pins in, and already the first one, I bridged it. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna swap out my tip for a finer point maybe give myself a slightly better chance. So just bear with me. All right, well, based on a visual inspection here, I would say I did a far from perfect, barely even mediocre job, but I think it's on there. So now I'm going to get these guys on. Now I will say when I was putting this on, what I found really helpful, and maybe this is just because I don't do surface mount, um, first of all, I didn't get it perfectly centered and some of my pins were a little bit skewed, but they weren't too bad. Uh, the next biggest thing that I found that was uh, kind of helpful, and this just probably just gonna make me sound stupid, but 
really just kind of poking the tip in and dragging it up onto the pin itself. That helped a lot. Kind of just get the pad with solder and then pull that solder up into the little divot around the pin. Um, you know, that helped for me. Again, I'm not a surface mount guy. Almost everything I do is through hole, so I have no idea what I'm doing. But now I can get on to the headers. So these should go a whole hell of a lot easier because this is what I've been doing since, uh, well, since I was about 12 years old. So let's get that going. All right, there we go. So finally I got the back soldered on too, or the headers anyway. Uh, you know, again, probably not a solder job I would show any of my engineer friends, especially <laughs> not this top, but it'll do well enough for me to play around with this guy. So my next thing is I'm going to hop over to the computer and try to get the uh, tool chain set up for the uh, for Arduino. See if I can get maybe a sketch loaded on here. All right, so a quick uh, Google search for ESP32 Arduino gives me a couple results here. And I do notice that uh, I'm pretty sure that the most up-to-date current uh, Arduino core for the ESP32 is actually surprisingly, this time it was done by Espressif. So Espressif is the company behind the ESP line of boards. So they actually took it upon themselves to create an Arduino core, which, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the 8266 was not written by Espressif, not the Arduino core. I know it's got its own real-time OS that, yeah, Espressif made. So as you can see, they do say not everything is working yet. So it's obviously still a work in project, or work in progress. Um, but they do say pin mode and read write should work. I should be able to put some interrupts. Uh, the serial should work, spy, wire, and Wi-Fi. Um, so look, that's good. It looks like most Wi-Fi things are almost the exact same as the 8266, which should mean that most libraries are compatible. That's a really big plus. I was a little bit worried that a lot of the Wi-Fi, a lot of the libraries that worked on the 8266 weren't going to work on the 32. Uh, I guess we'll see, though. You know, it says 99, so of course there is that 1%. Here we go. I'm going to... I already have the IDE installed. So, okay, go to the in Arduino IDE installation directory. Oh, God. Okay, so this is not going to be as easy as uh, just directly going to the package manager. Um, and it looks like they actually say that right up here. But let's go ahead. Let's see if we can get this going. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. All right. So we're going to clone... All right, so I'm in my hardware folder. So yeah, you have to make an Espresso folder. So. Pretty sure I'm spelling that right. Sure, somebody will point out that I don't if I screw this up. Just gonna copy and paste the clone here. Okay, it looks like this is installing the uh, compiler, the Extensa compiler. This may take a little while, so let's uh, hit that fast forward button. Well, wow, that took a lot longer than I expected. That took uh, probably on the order of about 10 minutes to uh, download. 
I looked at my bandwidth and I really wasn't using that much the whole time. Uh, well, whatever. Anyway, it's downloaded. So now it says restart Arduino. Luckily, I don't even... Oh, I do have it running. Let me restart it. So here's the moment of truth. Will I be able to select the ESP32 from the list of boards? Okay, we go to Tools, Board, and do I see it? I do not see the ESP32 in here. All right, that is somewhat upsetting, but not entirely unexpected. So I have a thought, and that thought is that I might actually have to put the... Uh, folder into the application itself. It does say go to the IDE installation directory. I was hoping I could do it through sort of the, uh, not the installation directory, the user directory that it makes for uh, installed boards. But that's okay. Let's see if I go and put it into the Arduino app directory. Let's see if that works. So I'll come in here. I'm just going to go and take this and directly put it in there. So now I've taken it out of sort of the package manager area and I've actually put it into the app itself like the instructions say. So my mistake, thought I could get away with it, but I can't. So now let's restart Arduino. Fingers crossed once again. Making our prayers to Jinja. All right, here we brought back in the. Oh, there we go. Here are my ESP32 modules. So I'm gonna just say I probably just have the dev module. I assume so anyway. I don't have any of those. You know, click on that. Now, here is a program of mine that uses my ESP helper library. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. It does use the Wi-Fi stuff. It uses a lot of things, might not be supported. Let's compile up. Oh, all right. Let's just see, this might be a simple error. Nope. It's because of an include statement for the 8266 MDNS. So, all right, so not everything is immediately compatible, especially those written specifically for the 8266. But let's go ahead and see what do we have as in the examples. So we do have the Wi-Fi client basic, all that. So hopefully if I select one of these and I compile, we should have no trouble. And let's see, how long is it going to take to compile? Because remember, the 8266 does take a while to compile. That was probably about the same amount of time that I would expect with the 8266. That's nice. So it looks like 92.921.600 is the default upload speed. And you can choose a flash fre frequency, it looks like. Um, but you know what? Instead of uploading some code right now, I think this is a good place to end this video. Thank you guys for watching. My next video, I will be definitely uploading and testing out some of the uh, ESP32 uh, code for Arduino. And I will be showing you guys how to upload it onto the ESP32. Uh, that's my next challenge. So I have the hardware put together and the software set up. So now I just got to put those two together and see if I can get a program running on this. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys later.